Welcome to My Creative Project. My name is Robert Keenan. I'm going to be talking about service as a spiritual discipline. Service is not something that's new to the church today. It's actually not something that's new to the New Testament. Service by people as a spiritual discipline and in general has been around since basically the beginning of time. In the Old Testament, we see lords and masters and kings and they all and a lot of them had servants. Uh, so servanthood, service, serving is all part of the body of Christ and just throughout the world. So people were created to serve one another and to serve God most importantly. So we're going to be looking at what the Bible has to say about service as a spiritual spiritual discipline. We're going to be looking at Richard J. Foster's book, The Celebration of Discipline, and a brief excerpt on what he had has to say about service. For any believers, if you're new in your walk with God, if you've been a believer for a while, this book is going to help you. This is a book you want to get uh, your hands on, The Celebration of Discipline by Richard Foster. It's going to change your life. If you take this these spiritual disciplines, read it, learn about it, and apply it to your life, you're going to do very well. So service is, the reason I chose service is because it's something important. I mean, a lot of us in Bible college, we're preparing for the ministry, and that is going into a type of service that's not, that's a, a service to God and to man, and it's dealing with eternal matters. So it, it it is a great service. Uh, service and submission go hand in hand as spiritual disciplines. I will, the focus will be on, on service, but submission is part of it too because w some, sometimes we're called to serve in ways that uh, you know, hurt our pride, hurt our ego. We, crucify, we have to crucify the flesh to really uh, be dedicated and look at the thoughts and the intents of our heart. The Bible says that we'll be judged not only by our actions, not only by how we served, right? We'll also be judged the reasons that we did it. Our motivations, our thoughts, and our intentions too. So service has to be an inward discipline first. And then it can become an outward discipline. And something that we need to check our hearts and our minds and say, why am I doing this, you know, and, and, uh, and am I doing it as unto the Lord? And then if not, make the corrections or just do your best with it to, to go in that direction. So let's jump into it. Service as a spiritual discipline. I was very impressed with what I read in from BibleStudyTools.com, the words serve, service, and servant in various forms occur well over 1,100 times in the New International Version. People are servants of other human beings and servants of God. So we know it's been around since before the early church. But we're going to see from the life, of, life and ministry of Jesus, Him serving, Him giving us an example of how to serve, and then teaching us on how it is to serve. And then we'll see what some of the, the people who wrote the New Testament or were used by the Holy Spirit to uh, uh, write the New Testament, what they had to say about service as well. Serve. I thought it would be good to include from the Strong's definitions. In the Greek is the word dulio, D-O-U-L-E-U-O. -E it means to be a slave, literal or figurative, involuntary or voluntary, or to be in, in bondage or to do service. The King James translates Strong's G-130, uh, 1398 in the following manner, serve 18 times, be in bondage four, do service three times. And again, we see to be a slave, 
serve, do service of a nation in subjection to another, to other nations, a metaphor to obey or submit to, in a good sense to yield obedience, in a bad sense of those who become slaves to base power, to yield to, give oneself up to. Servant, in the Strong's information, Strong's definition, I believe in the Hebrew, is diakonos. Diakonos, D-I-A-K-O-N-O-S. Probably from an obsolete uh, diako. To run errands, an attendant, a waiter at a table or other menial duties, uh, especially a Christian teacher and a pastor, technically a deacon or deaconess, minister or servant. So we get, we, we get the base, the, the gist of it is that servant is a lowly position that people serve in, in many different ways. And so let's go on to see what the life of Jesus has to say about it, how he taught us to serve and the example that he gave. Before we jump into, into that, I'm going to read an excerpt from the Celebration of Discipline by Richard Foster on page 130. I love this. This outlines how the body wants to react to serving in some cases. It's not all the time. Um, but I thought this was a great outline of, of what the reality of it is. The flesh whines against service but screams against hidden service. It strains and pulls for honor and recognition. It will devise subtle, religiously acceptable means to call attention to the service rendered. If we stoutly refuse to give in to the lust of the flesh, we crucify it. Every time we crucify the flesh, we, crucified our, we crucify our pride and arrogance. That's what we want to do. Ultimately, when we serve, you know, service can be in vain. If people are serving out, of, you know, maliciously or to be seen by men, they're getting their reward right there. Uh, but God honors a, a place of service when we not only act like a servant, but we are a servant. So again, outwardly and inwardly, uh, this is... A, this is summarizing how we are to serve. So let's jump into the Bible. What does Jesus say about serving? And we're going to see that he actually gave an example as the ultimate servant. I love what was written in the Celebration of Discipline that Jesus lived the cross life. He didn't just live life to go to the cross. It was, it was, a, a, it was a form of what I just said there, but basically... We, we understand that Jesus led a submissive life to people when, you know, he could have called down legions of angels to be taken out of here and, and protected by everybody who was beating him and spitting on him and pulling out his beard. But he was submiff, submissive all the way to the cross and died a, a criminal's death in service to God and, and to man to reconcile us to the Father. So we see the ultimate service in the life of Jesus. So the gospel according to John chapter 13, verses 1 through 17. John 13, 1 through 17 in the New International Version. Jesus washes his disciples' feet. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. Verse 4, So he got up from the meal took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that 
was wrapped around him. When he came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, Peter said, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean. If you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is his messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. What an example. We see Jesus, whose Lord and teacher, going to the lowest position and washing his feet, washing uh, the, the feet of his disciples. So we, and then he told us, he, he said, I did this as an example, and you're to do it to other people. That's true service right there. Another piece of scripture, Matthew chapter 20, verse 24 to 28 in the New King James Version. The Bible says, And when the ten heard it, they were greatly displeased with the two brothers. But Jesus called to them, called them to himself, and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lorded over them, and those who are great exercise authority over them. Yet it shall not be so among you. But whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. And whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be, ser to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The mother of Zebedee's sons had come to him and come to Jesus and asked that his, her sons sit on his left and right hand. And he told her, that's not my decision, but basically you, you, don't know, you don't even know what you're asking. And so she asked for them to be great in the kingdom of God. And Jesus pulled his, his disciples aside and said, if you want to be great, you must be servant of all. So again, we see Jesus giving us the example of true servanthood. And this is not just, this just didn't happen two years ago. There's people who serve in the church today in all types of ministries. I'm going to, going to touch on that in the end. And so, so stay tuned and, and, uh, and, and hear about it. And, you know, just listen if, if any one of these things that I'm going to mention touches your heart and that you feel like, you're called to, to serve in that way in your local church. It's very important that we serve. I have a note in here. Yes, shortly after this, in Matthew 23, Jesus mentions that service is paramount. Jesus 23 Verse 11, but he who is greatest among you shall be your servant. He who is greatest among you, this is the Son of God saying, the greatest person will be the servant. Servants of all, let's see what the Bible has to say about people who, who are servants of all, what the Bible outlines as, um, as types of service. Mark chapter 9 Verses 33 to 35. Then he came to 
Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What was it you disputed among yourselves on the road? But they kept silent, for on the road they had disputed among themselves who would be called the greatest, who would be the greatest. And he sat down, called the twelve, and said to him, If anyone desires to be first, he shall be last of all and servant of all. Again, we see Jesus telling the people, his disciples, but also, uh, you know, the word of God being the most printed, given away, and sold books in history, um, leading the way by the billions of copies. Jesus and God are telling people that if you want to be called great, you must be a servant of all. So service was demonstrated in the early church. And also the word of God standing forever has continued through the ages all the way up until now where we are called to serve people and to serve God. Servants of all continued. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verses 19 through 23. For though I am free from all men, this is Paul, I have made myself a servant to all that I might win the more. And to the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might win the Jews. To those who are under the law, as under the law, that I might win those who are under the law. To those who are without the law, as without the law. In parentheses, not being without law toward God, but under law toward Christ. That I might win those who are without law. To the weak I became as weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I might might be all means by all means save some. Now this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be a partaker of it with you. Paul's saying, I became like all different types of people, and I've served them for the, for the cause of Christ, for the sake of the gospel, for them to go ahead and, and, um, and have salvation in Christ, and then also to live that life to build the kingdom of God. So that we see the importance again that Paul's making himself like all these other people to win them. And that's a great service before God. We're going to also see Paul as a servant who went through many things for the cause of Christ. Servant of all, 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 7 through 10. But the The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all the things, have fervent love for one another. For love will cover over a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. So we're seeing there that although they didn't use the word serve, there's serving and being hospitable, the service in the gift that we've been given to God to minister unto people, and then to be serious and watchful in our prayers. We see Jesus as a servant, not from the perspective of Jesus. I put this in here because this is one of the most incredible, astonishing Bible verses that shows Jesus as a servant, most people aren't going to understand it that way upon hearing it for the first time. But I believe the Holy Spirit brought this verse to me because of, I'll explain a little bit more after, John 21, 25 in the New King James. And there were also many other things that Jesus did, which if they were written one by one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Amen. So if everything that Jesus did was written down in books, the entire world couldn't contain the books. That is, that's mind-boggling. Like, how great the life of Jesus was as a servant throughout his life, throughout his ministry, how much wasn't recorded that he did, 
what great miracles as a servant to people did he go around doing as a service to God? So Jesus li lived a, a disciplined life and did so many things that the world couldn't contain the books. If they were, if they were recorded on paper, if all of them were. Servants of one another. Paul writes to the churches in Galatia. Galatians 5, 13 through 14 in the New Living Translation. For you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters. But don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. For the whole law can be summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. We're seeing love as a major service in the early church that we're called to do in, you know, in service, but also as a way of life that they're teaching, that they, they taught to the churches. Servants of God. In Colossians 3, 23 and 24, New King James, And whatever you do, do it heartily, He's addressing bond servants here, slaves. Do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. So what he's saying is serve as you serve men, do it as unto the Lord, because that's where your reward is. I can't tell you how many times as a spiritual discipline I've leaned on that scripture and said, okay, I'm doing this for God. I'm doing this to, uh, to win favor before the Lord and, and I will gr you know, grin and bear it through the times that I, I have to serve. But inwardly, the, the drive and the motivation was to serve God because I know I'm storing up my rewards in heaven. That list that I shared with you that I told you I was going to bring up uh, towards you know, later in the message, this is, a message, this is a list of many ways to serve or be a servant in the modern day church. Um, one that many local churches, that all local churches need. And all these, even how little it is or behind the scenes it is, God honors it and, and people benefit from it. So these are ways that people practice Service as a spiritual discipline, I do in some of these ways. I, I don't in many of these ways, uh, but we're going to see that there's a great need. And also, I want to encourage you to step up to the plate in your local church and do the same thing as well to serve your brothers and sisters and to uh, gain favor with God. Store up your, your treasures in heaven when you're doing it from, a, again, a place a, a heart of love, a heart of servanthood, and, uh, as, and as unto the Lord. So, people serve in prayer, intercessory prayer, praying for people throughout the church, spending time in fasting and prayer. Uh, prayer is a great service to God. and In fact, all Christians are called to serve, but then there are some people who uh, God uses more to, to stand in the gap for one another and to pray for. So prayer is a great service. Pray, uh, serving on a worship team, the musicians, the singers, the, the worship leaders that usher us into the presence of the Lord, that is a great service before men and God. Um, so serving on a worship team, taking care of children's ministries, that goes hand in hand with Sunday school teachers and, and people who watch the kids in the daycare um, as a spiritual discipline of service. So there's a great need for that, for godly men and women who love God and know the word of God to be looking after these kids in service, to be teaching them in Sunday school, to be leading them um, throughout their, their childhood coming up in the knowledge of the Lord. That's a great service and it's one that's needed. Service in preaching, preaching and teaching the word of God as a minister. Obviously we have 
pastors and elders and deacons and bishops and, uh, and evangelists and prophets and teachers and apostles who all teach and preach the Word of God. Very important service to God and to people. Serving, and serving around the church building, people who work on the, the building, people who take care of the building, custodian work, serving as a custodian is a huge thing, serving as a maintenance person is a huge thing. There's so many behind the work, uh, behind the uh, curtain services that are spiritual disciplines as well, especially when it's volunteer time and you're getting paid nothing to do it and you're doing it as unto the Lord. It's a spiritual discipline. Taking, nope, I already said that. Serving as an usher. Ushers are very important to running an effective service. Having successful ushers who serve in God's house. Uh, serving on the media team, very important for today's day and age. There's a great need for uh, media personnel, cameramen, audio, and, and so on. That's a great service. Serving for cooking, for weekly fellowship, coffee and donuts, whatever your church does, making meals on the holidays. Uh, cooking is, is a great service that anyone who's alive appreciates. Uh, very important service and the more the merrier. So serving as a greeter, as security, as parking lot attendants, all spiritual disciplines for these people as well they have different gifts and god uses them in different ways but nonetheless serving in as as security as lot attendant as uh what was the other one there as a greeter these are all great services service as a youth group leader and on various ministries that the church has serving the community as well serving uh, youth, young men and women, if you're seeing this message, um, there's a great need for your service as youth leaders to bring up the youth in, in, this, in this day and age and these, these generations, our generation, the younger generations, all need godly men and women who know the Word of God, who have a pure heart and have a fear of the Lord to be serving in these capacities. I know this is a creative project for the for service and the spiritual discipline of service, but I'm also using it as well to uh, reach people with the importance of service and how uh, great it is before men and God. Service to the poor, people who don't have it all, they need help. Uh, you know, they, it's not by any means the most glorious thing, but how great of a service it is before God. And look in Proverbs, there's all sorts of scripture that talk about um, the person that doesn't turn their back on the poor, they will never lack anything. Uh, service to poor people and the malnourished and the handicapped and people who need help, this is a great service. This is uh, one of the greatest things that you can do is is serving your fellow person. If you have gifts and abilities and talents and money, you can, uh, God favors men in this way for taking care of other men and women, especially the ones who need it. In wrapping up on legionnaire.org, written by Donald Whitney, the gospel of Jesus Christ transforms enemies of God into servants of God. The Holy Spirit still works through the gospel to turn those who serve their idols, such as wealth, career, sports, sex, house, land, and so on, into servants of God. Just as he did in the Apostle Paul's day when the missionary wrote to some relatively new Christians, you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. We see, we see service again. These people serve God in all types of different capacities and ways and served each other and turned from their wicked idols. There's many things that people are, you know, I, I, I don't have idols. God is most important in my life. 
and, uh, and I still have to guard my heart against having idols. But idolatry is a very serious form of sin and also takes away from our servant, uh, our, our service to God and man. And it's something that was beautifully outlined there that Paul said, you have turned from your, your dumb idols. I don't know if he used the word dumb. Uh, nope, I added that. You turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. So service we see is is a very important spiritual discipline that it's been around forever, that Jesus taught it, that Jesus gave us examples of how to serve people. And also uh, the early church taught service as a spiritual discipline. It's just a way of life for human beings that we all uh, serve each other in all different jobs, electricians, plumbers, salespeople, uh, computer, you know, engineers, media, construction, nurses, nurses is a great service, uh, teachers, uh, uh, anyone who works with, with children. And we're in all these different ways, we're all serving each other somehow. And also the ministry, a great service. Um, the professor who's going to grade this, great service, uh, working at the college and giving us our education in the Lord's work. So all these types of services can be applied as spiritual disciplines too, especially when you do it from a heart of servanthood as unto the Lord and you do your best before men and women who even if they treat you with contempt, they look down upon you, they treat you like a servant, they, they treat you like trash. You see, Jesus didn't say, I'm not doing this. I'm, I'm the Lord Christ. I, I, you know, he, was, he, excuse me, didn't consider himself above serving people even when he was abused for it. So we can see this and practice this to serve in submission to people and we're doing it as unto God and our rewards wait for us in heaven. The Bible says if you humble yourself, you will be exalted. If you exalt yourself, you will be humbled. And adding service into our life can assure us greatness in the kingdom of God, which is more important if you live this whole life serving other people, serving God and doing it for the right reasons, you have great rewards ahead of you in heaven. So God bless you. I hope this message found you extremely well. My name's Robert Keenan, and this is my creative project on service as a spiritual discipline. I hope, I hope and pray that you prosper in everything that you do and that you're learning to serve your, your fellow men and, and woman, that you're serving in a, that you find a place in, from that list that I mentioned in your local church, find a way to serve people, find a way to serve God, and great things will come into your life. And also when you face persecutions, to know why you're doing it and who your hope and, and faith is in. So God bless you and have a great day.